Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Here's the update on the nor'easter for Sunday. It's taking shape in the Gulf of Mexico. Some subtle changes, probably going to bring a little bit less rain west, more rain east, obviously. And I'm going to kind of show you where that cutoff is going to be. But Sunday is going to be wet regardless. It's just a matter of how wet for some of us. And then the wind is the other big story we got to talk about. So looking at the wide view, I apologize for the satellite data. There's something going on with our data feed here. Um, so we're getting a lot of uh, flashing there where some panels are missing, but I'll stop it because we can see the storm. I mean, there it is over the Gulf of Mexico. It's impressive. You can see the low is there, but all the moisture is on this side and it's really uh, beginning to take shape. In fact, we can look at the satellite loop here and this is a little bit better view. This is the daytime satellite loop as the sun comes up. You can see the circulation there and look at all those clouds feeding off the top of it. Pretty impressive low pressure system. Um, not tropical, but man, it's a large low pressure and kind of what you expect in this setup. What we're going to see happen today, I'm going to turn the satellite data off because it's super annoying, um, is we're going to see this thing begin to take shape, move across Florida, and then do this into tomorrow. We've also got another low back here, which is going to help enhance the rainfall on the northwest side. Real quick update on the severe weather outlook today. Um, you can see Florida under that risk for severe storms. I'll turn the radar off. That's the severe weather outlook today. Going to be a rough day down in, in Florida, especially later today and tonight. Could see isolated tornadoes with this setup. And then tomorrow, as this moves north, you can see the, the low risk is creep, creeping back to the west a little bit. And we've also got a medium risk now introduced for parts of coastal North Carolina and South Carolina to the Grand Strand. So severe weather risk is going to be an issue there as well. We talked a lot about the... Um, the flash flood risk and again that risk is, is staying pretty steady right now we go the day one um you know a flash flood risk we're definitely going to see that that potential out there today across florida and as we go into day two that's going to move up into the carolinas so you can see the the low to medium risk today and then we go into tomorrow and that risk moves up into the carolinas so we still got the risk for flash flooding now let's show you a couple of products here we'll show you the latest update i'm gonna move my head out of the way still expecting heavy rain for most of sunday Again, generally that one to three inch total range. I'll kind of show you some of the updates there. Heavier rain and more wind to the east, but locally gusts could be high between 35 and 40. I think that'd be the highest sustained 15 to 20. So any of those outdoor activities or outdoor decorations or toys, probably got to get those secured. Could see scattered power outages for sure with temperatures in the low 50s. The reason we think we're going to see some scattered power outages, you get the combination of heavy rain and those gusty winds. That is certainly enough to bring down those power lines. Let's quickly show you the timing impacts here. I'm going to move my head out of the way here. Move it way down to the corner here. Um, no tornado risk in our area. There is a tornado risk in eastern North Carolina, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Uh, power outages, again, later in the day. High winds later in the day. So it's really the evening hours. But the heavy rain will likely be in the middle of the day. So there might be an offset between the, the strongest winds and the heaviest rain and that's actually not a good thing because what happens here is the heavy rains fall first saturate the ground right you get really soaking rains and then the high winds move in here and that's why the power outages go up so kind of not the best combination here so let's we're going to go back to the map here and we'll start talking about the future cast all right let's get right into the future cast it's pretty straightforward you see our low pressure developing to the south there's the front and the other low pressure and kind of high pressure to our north keeps us kind of uh, mild today, maybe in the upper 50s. But as the rain moves into this dry air, some of it will evaporate tonight. And that's actually going to cause things to cool down. So we go into tonight. I'll stop this at midnight tonight. We could see rain develop this evening, but it'll be after sunset. So if you have any plans today, you're fine. But you could see the light rain begins to develop pretty quickly tonight around midnight. As we get into the early hours of Sunday, I'm going to stop this at 7 a.m. Sunday morning. You could see widespread rain and here's the thing it's going to rain folks it's just a matter of how much and the thing that's helping the rain to the west normally a track on the coast you think ah oh, not much rain to the west but remember we got this low pressure in front coming in from the west as well that's going to help keep the rain in the forecast even further west but where you're going to see the really nasty rain is where these orange and yellows and yes yeah, severe weather in florida i mean look at that those are that's tornadic storms on the east side of that that's why along the Carolina coast, you can see that risk. We go into tomorrow afternoon, we'll go to about, it's pouring rain, look at it, it's raining everywhere. Um, <laughs> it's just coming down, this is noon, absolute deluge, right? One o'clock, Panthers game, oh, miserable, right? But here's where the severe weather risk is, right in these areas and offshore. So we'll be watching these, so there'll be supercells developing offshore and trying to move inland. 
as the surface low goes from Savannah to Georgia, to uh, uh, Charleston to Georgetown to South uh, up towards uh, the Myrtle Beach area into the Grand Strand and then towards the North Carolina border. Middle of the afternoon. So if I'm looking for the heaviest rain on Sunday, it'll probably be light early. And then by midday into the afternoon is the heaviest rain. So three, four, five o'clock just cranks up. And by four o'clock, you see the rain pushing east. Um, the heaviest stuff is still around on five o'clock. I think at six, I, I skipped it. I don't know why I skipped at seven, but I think at six o'clock is when we might see it let up a little bit. It's still going to be raining likely, lightly drizzle mist, but the heavy stuff should move out. So that's why I said daylight hours from sunrise to sunset, it's going to rain on Sunday. That's that's a given. The good news, I guess, if there's any, is that maybe after sunset, things will begin to move out. But this is when the winds pick up, because even though the winds are strong on the front side, the back side, we're going to have really strong winds coming in. And so those northwest winds will be absolutely howling. Um, we go into the overnight hours Monday morning. So people were asked, well, when's it all going to clear out? Yeah, Monday, it'll be out of here, but the winds will be howling. And then Monday morning is when we see the transition to snow in the mountains. There'll be a a burst of northwest flow snow on, on the backside. You can see that even into Monday afternoon. So this will be a, a nice little burst of snow for the mountains as we get some snow and even some maybe some rain east of the mountains as that pushes off to the east. So let's do this. This is a 60 hour loop. I'll loop the whole thing there and you can just see this marching up the east coast, just your classic nor'easter. And, and But in this case, not as much cold air as we normally see in the winter uh, with the nor'easter. So let's get into some of the details. Here's the rainfall totals just updated this morning. You can clearly see around Charlotte, you're looking at one to three inches off to the east, probably three, four, five, six inches. And then in the mountains, it's a little bit less. It's more scattered. So still a good soaking rain. Um, but clearly the further east you go, the heavier the rain is going to be. Winds, a little tricky here. So this is the max wind gust right now. Across the Piedmont, you've seen a lot of 30s here, but occasionally a 40. That's why... We're going max gust of about 40. And then along the coast, you're seeing 40, 50, maybe 60 mile per hour winds out in the outer banks. And then in the mountains, there's another burst of, of heavy wind, but that's more because of the backside winds that are coming in Sunday night and really Monday. So um, probably a little bit different scenario. The nor'easter caused most of these winds and then the backside is the, the northwest side of that whole mess. Gotta talk about flood risk. I posted some great maps on my Facebook page. So if you want to go check those out, but I want to quickly talk about the coastal flooding because you can see the flood inundation here. Um, the chart here on the right, if you look over on the right of your screen, this is where the uh, you actually see the legend. You can see there's going to be a lot of coastal flooding. This is going to be similar to a tropical system through South Carolina, up through the Grand Strand. I know a lot of the, the beaches and towns along the coast have already been putting up um, you know, temporary dunes and even flood protection. I mean, you go to like Ocean Isle and Holden Beach, uh, there's probably going to be quite a bit of overwash and flooding as this water gets pushed in. Southern Outer Banks from Bald Head Island up towards the, the Crystal Coast, um, you're going to see, uh, you know, from Wilmington, the north uh, top sail, and then up into the Crystal Coast. And then the Outer Banks is where it gets a little more interesting. You're probably going to have some ocean side flooding and then some sound side on the back side as the winds switch around. And just to highlight, like an area like the Pamlico River, you know, that's a pretty big jump there. Um, could see, you know, 4.93 feet above the standard or just above sea level. <clears throat> so again, I posted some great maps that the, the, the you know, Weather Service Office in Moorhead City has put out, but, you know, this is going to be a significant um, flooding event for the coast, kind of like a tropical system. I'm going to show you the, the wave heights again real quickly, and you can see some of the water being pushed in there, but the, it's the inundation that we're worried about. Um, up and down the coast and really all the way into the northeast. So uh, definitely want to stay weather aware with this system on your Sunday, primarily because of the power outages and the wind. So today you got all day to prepare. So charge everything up, uh, take down any decorations outside that might blow away. If they are out there, maybe secure them, loose items. And if you're on the coast, be ready for storm surge, flooding. And it could sneak up on you. It could it, it could actually come more Saturday or Sunday night into Monday morning than during the height of the storm. So don't get caught off guard that once the rain stops and maybe it's over, no, there will be the potential for sound side flooding and even flooding going well past the rain ending on Monday. So please stay weather aware. I will post updates throughout the day. I'm working tonight as well. I will post updates tonight as we get ready for this massive nor'easter on Sunday.